Welcome, everyone. Welcome, 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 everyone. Today we are back to the EBN Scholars, and I'm going to talk something very interesting today. I'm going to talk about scholarship opportunities, or just to be specific, as you can see on the uh, you can see on the banner going down here. It says uh, study in the United States of America full funded programs for international students. Uh, it is the dream of international students or everybody to get financial support to pursue their studies. And if you are international student, uh, everybody wants to get a very high quality education. In order to get high quality education, you have to find where are these kind of the basic schools? Where are they available? And if you go to look on the list of the basic schools in the world, the world ranking of the universities, most of the universities are in the United States. That's number one. But it doesn't matter whether you are from America, you are from Europe, you are from Africa, you are from Asia, you are from whatever country you are. Uh, everyone is looking for financial support, is looking for ways uh, you can be able to get the education. Uh, especially if you're an international student from developing countries, yes, some people, they have the dream that they want, I want to go to America to study. I've already talked to, to some about Europe. I'll talk more in other videos. But I wanted to focus on uh, study in America and especially the opportunities for international students where we can be able to get full funded programs. In that way, what are the resources you need to have? How can you go about it to apply? How are you going to be competitive and get these kind of opportunities? Because you might have some money. You can say my father, my nephew, my brother, my whatever will be able to pay for my education in America. But basically it's very, very expensive. Uh, the cheapest college you might get, very, very cheap. The school fees, tuition fees alone can go minimum 10,000. That is the cheapest one. If you add with the living expenses, apartment, food, transportation, and everything, per year it goes to minimum 25000 maybe. That is a lot of money. So if that is a lot of money, what do you need to do so that you can be in a position to be able to secure scholarships? Because if you say, my father will pay for me. Why should your father pay 30,000? And if you, let's say you have bachelor degree, you have good results. Why can't you go and take the required examinations, GRI, GMAT, or uh, TOEFL, or LTs, which will not cost you more than 500, and to apply maybe 10 universities or 15, 20 universities, you use one more thousand US dollar and you can get a scholarship. So you can save a lot just by knowing what are the ways to study in the United States. I know you might have some questions and some people that say, why EBM is talking almost every topic? What kind of experience does he have to be having that kind of authority to be able to talk all these kind of things? Myself, I prefer to listen to people who have experience and knowledge of the subject matter they are talking about. Myself, I like to talk or to listen to people who have the good intention to help another person. So I like to give you my little bit of background when it comes to the scholarship. Because some people, they want to know the credential of someone or if you already got the scholarship before yourself. So I came in the United States back in 2008 under the most prestigious scholarship called Fulbright Scholarship. I will talk about Fulbright in this video and to make you understand how can you apply. There are so, very, so many types of Fulbright and all these are available to almost every country around the world. 
for people to come here in America for various programs with Fulbright. So for me, I came with one type of Fulbright program, which is called the Fulbright Foreign Language Teaching Assistantship Program. My bachelor degree is political science and language studies. So I came to America to teach Swahili language at Marshall University in West Virginia. So we came 12 people from Tanzania. There are some people came from Uganda. Some people came from Kenya. Some people came from almost all countries around the world, came to teach their languages and their culture in America for one academic year. So it was one year almost, we can say specifically, it was a 10-month program. And the entire process, take, I mean, they give you more than 30000 going to 40,000 uh, US dollar. If you in include the cost of a flight ticket insurance, cost of uh, the uh, living expenses, and they pay some to the school. So it goes to over almost 40,000. That's number one. So I did a one year program of teaching Swahili language and African culture at Marshall University in West Virginia. That is when I started my life. While I was doing my master's degree, I was, I was, I was teaching at Marshall University my goal was uh, after one year, because the program was a non-renewable one-year program. So the program after that, I want to go to the next phase. The next phase is to make sure that I'm going to make sure that I apply for master's program because I came here with a bachelor degree. So in order to be sure of how I can be able to get scholarships, I had, obviously, I already taken the uh, English proficiency test, the 12th test of English as a foreign language, the 12th exam. And I had a good scores. Then I had to take the GRI graduate record examination. I will talk about it later. So I had to take this is a required exam. You have to take it. And I had to apply so many schools. It doesn't matter. This is very, very clear because I will go to answer some of the questions like how many universities do you need to apply? Where do you need to apply? All these kind of things. So I had to apply to 25 universities. Why did I apply for 25 universities? Remember, I had a very good work experience. I'm already have American experience and the African experience. I had a very good GPA, but why am I going to apply to 25 universities? The answer is very simple. I'm not the only one who is looking for scholarships. China has 1.4, 1.5 billion people. India, 1.2 billion people. Nigeria, 190 million people. Just assume those are three countries. How many people from those countries are applying to come to America? And they might have better GPA than you, better results than you. They might have better work experience than you. So it is a competition. You go there, you're going to compete. So in the competition, you never know. If they are looking for five people, they want five people to be admitted to be given scholarships. And you are 100 people. Even if all have the same uh, uh, results, same everything. Obviously, some others have to be not getting it. It's just like a green card lottery. When you apply, if you are 7 million people, all 7 million people you are going to put in the ballot, they, they are going to give, maybe they are selecting maybe 130,000, like how they did 132,000, but the one who will be given the visas will be 55,000 max. So in the end, even if all have the same qualification, there is a limitation. So that's why you have to apply many scholarships, many opportunities. I didn't have the room to lose. That's why when you find why Lionel Messi, why Cristiano Ronaldo, they are the best goal scorers in our generation. Each season, they have 30 to 40 goals in a calendar year. Why? Because they take more shots than any other player in the field. And I can prove you that by showing you this graph. You can see uh, on this year, there is this graph. This graph is showing you I showed you the number of, uh, these are the games, the 14 games Christian Ronaldo uh, played. Uh, if you can look here, he played 20, uh, 14 games. Uh, I mean, he had played 14 games. He had 25 goals. And then he had eight assists. And he had eight, eight shots. Eight, eight shots on target. That means in every 2.5 shots on target, he had one goal. No, in every, in every 3.5 shots. So you have to take so many shots on target in order to score. So you have to apply so many universities in order to get one. Sometimes uh, if you watch the World Cup, the previous World Cup, Ronaldo scored hat-trick against uh, Spain. 
One of the goals was a mistake of David Daguerre, the goalkeeper for Spain, national team. But it cannot be a mistake if you don't, you don't shoot on target. If you, sh you, don't, you pass someone, the goal, the, you don't shoot on target, there is no mistake. So whether it be by mistake or by, by intention, you have to shoot on target. So you have to apply for a college. You have to apply for the opportunities in order to be able to get that scholarship. So I applied to 25 universities or 25 scholarships, and I got three, meaning in every seven Almost, almost eight scholarships I applied, I got one. That's the average. You see? So in every eight shots on target, I got one. But if I applied five universities, possibly I didn't get one. So that's why people ask, I applied university scholarship, but I didn't get, you cannot get a scholarship. I said, okay, the first question I ask you, what is your GPA? Have you taken the TOEFL exam? If you apply for the use, have you taken GRE? And I'll ask another question, how many universities did you apply? In other words, how many shots on target did you do? If you do less shots on target, forget about it. You are wasting your time. Forget about it. You are wasting your time. Because you are not the only one applying. There are people with this similar qualification like you, or even more experience or a qualification more than you, and they are playing the same program, and they want the same university with the same reasons which you have. If you want just a scholarship just to get justice for the money, there are some people they have the same, they want money. If you want just to go to come to America, they might have the same or similar reasons. If you apply, you want just to get something like you, let's say you apply and you get something like, let's say, uh, I just want to come to America, they have the same reasons. So you have to raise up your game so that you can be able to apply. That is the first part for you to be able to understand just the basic of my background. So when I applied, so the first scholarship was about 40,000 to come to cover, that was the full bright, to teach Swahili language and African culture at Marshall University. After that, I applied to 25 universities. I got one university in Netherlands and two in America. But my target was to stay in America. So I went to California at one among the prestigious university, University of San Diego. I was admitted to the Master's in Peace Studies and Conflict Resolution. At the beginning, I was given the school fees or tuition fees alone, 36,000 US dollar. And then I had to find the cost of living, um, the living expenses for myself. So what I did was, I started applying for what you call assistantship, like in the library, in the international office, whatever. While I was applying, and it was like one week before I went back to Tanzania, I've already filled the visa application form. I received another email from Rotary International from California. The Rotary, one Rotary Club in California wrote me the letter that uh, we know that you have been admitted at the University of San Diego and you are going to pursue the Masters in Peace and Justice Studies or Peace Studies and Conflict Resolution. And Rotary International, through the club here in San Diego, the president and the mission of this particular year, and like for the, they had the plan for three, four years, is to make sure that we are going to uh, support peace studies and conflict resolution around the world. So we are going to uh, fund or to sponsor one student from Africa. And among the students who have been admitted, you are among the most highly qualified. We want to give you 24,000 US dollar to cover your cost of living. Forget about other, we know you have other scholarship. Uh, so this is a person to help you with the cost of living. So in total, I got 36,000 for the tuition and fees from the John B. Croc, the School of Peace, the university itself. And then I got, uh, uh, 24,000. So I was given 60,000 US dollar to cover my master's degree. And if I add the previous year before, I was given 40,000. So within 24 month period, I had over a hundred thousand dollar scholarship money. And by scholarship, it means I don't pay back. I don't have a student loan. So while I was doing my master's, on a monthly basis, I was getting 2,000 US dollar for living apartment, 
the overall cost of living, ex all expenses covered while I was doing my master's degree at the University of San Diego. So that makes my life very easy. So I will go to explain to you how did I go about applying and getting those scholarships in America and why or how are you going to do the same thing? I got those scholarships not because I'm smarter than you, not that I'm better than you. It's just because I know the ways on how you can be able to apply and on how you can be able to secure scholarships in America. So let's join together and give you the tricks on how you can be able to go about it and get these opportunities. So let's go again to start giving you some of the, some of the, uh, let me give you some of the ways and the resources you can be able to do that. After getting the scholarships, studying down the road, I had to find ways on how I can help people. Even before I came to America, I started in my scholarship blog. I, I was blogging about a scholarship. For me, the YouTube thing came very, very, very late. I was a typical blogger on scholarships. Since 2007, I was in my second year of college when I started doing blogging. So I was focusing on blog, 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 blog all the time. And then I had it to, uh, down the road I said, I'll come to write a book about scholarship. And that is when I, I started like thinking about what can I be able to do uh, to write a book. So I planned, okay, let me make a book. Uh, I made even like the audio uh, trailer of the scholarship book, but I didn't do it. But later, I was able to write three books. And I'm going to share, so I'm going to explain to you these three books. And I'm going to give you uh, the link where you can be able to get these three books. Uh, especially for this one, it will be for free. Today, you are going to get this book for free. PhD scholarships for Africans in the United States of America. Uh, so I will put the link on the uh, description here. And you can be able to get this type of opportunities. Uh, I see uh, Roll with Liz is coming up here. Uh, hello, Liz. How are you? Hi. Welcome, welcome again here to our channel. <laughs> yeah, I'm fine. How are you? I'm doing very good. How is Colorado? <laughs> How is everything over there? We're good. Yeah, so today I'm talking, if you have been able to follow, uh, to talk, uh, I'm talking about specific uh, opportunities where people can be able to uh, to get these kind of opportunities, uh, especially for scholarship. Because many people, uh, we have been talking about green card lottery. So what is beyond the green card? Uh, how are you going to get these opportunities uh, in general, because it is not easy, especially for America. I mean, I know some people have been asking you, how can I come to America? And the lottery is the lottery. It's not easy to get that opportunity. For me, scholarship is more guarantee if you meet the qualification than the green card lottery. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. I... And it's, it's good that you're sharing your books and knowledge for people to check through. Yes. I don't want people to have any excuse. You know, some people, they, they get excuses. Oh, I didn't get this scholarship because, uh, uh, because you know, I didn't know about this opportunity. Yeah. So this, uh, this book, which I'm going to put here, is a free book. This one. Uh, is PhD scholarships for Africans in the United States. Even if I said for Africans, even if you're from Latin America, you are from Asia, you can use the same one. So the first 25% of this book is giving you the uh, procedure to apply, and especially my journey, how I applied here and how you needed to do to apply in America. When they say, send it, for instance, the official transcript, what does that mean? It is different when for other people. So people, they need to know that. Like when they say, write a statement of purpose, what do they need to hear from you? Mm -hmm. When they say, uh, let's, for instance, uh, 
Why should we give you scholarship? It's not about explaining, you know, I'm orphan and you are 35 years old. There is no 35 years old who is orphan, I know. Orphan has to be a minor. You are not 35 years old, you have a wife, you have kids, and you say you are orphan, no. Don't say, oh, you know, I live in the village. They don't care in the village. If you say you live in the village, explain how are you going to transform your village in terms of maybe on the windmill or irrigation system. He's not talking about being like asking for the sympathy. That's why the first chapter of this book is saying scholarship is not, uh, say, uh, uh, don't look for the sympathy. The scholarship application is a war. It's not like you're working there and they say, you know, uh, I'm poor, I'm whatever, give me scholarship. The daughter of Obama is studying at Harvard through scholarship. The son of, uh, of Snoop Dogg Dog, who is a millionaire, is studying UCLA with his scholarship. The son of Master P is studying uh, USC with his scholarship. Why? Because they deserve. So it's not about, uh, about being poor, number one. Do you have the GPA required? Yes. Why should we give you scholarship? Show how best you are, you in terms of work experience, in terms of uh, education, and what are you going to plan to do in this world? And write your resume, and you start writing like in African. <laughs> My tribe is in Sukuma, or I'm, 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 whatever tribe you are. Then, uh, you know, I'm married, or I'm single. We are not looking for husband or wife to the school. Or, you know, I'm born again Christian. So what? Are we looking for a pastor here? Or are we looking for a sheikh, whatever, uh, five prayers a day? We don't care about that. People should know how to write the resume. Not in African way, explaining unnecessary things. You are applying for PhD and you already have master's degree and you put even education level, you put a primary school. What primary school for? What's your of species, whatever. You are applying for master's for PhD, that means you have master's already. So those are the things people should understand. So all those, they are written in the first, uh, first, uh, first 25% of this book. The rest of the book, it comes with it now the scholarships themselves. So for instance, if you wanted to study, let's say you want to study, let's say what, PhD in maybe mathematics. So I have put, I've collected all the universities in America with a PhD in mathematics. They are here. This is the university. These are requirements. This is how you can apply. Hello. You wanna say hi? Hi. How are you? I'm baby gum. You're doing good? Yes. That's so good. So I just studied English and I feel really sad. Yes. Let me, I don't know if you dropped my link in the chat. People should check me out. Yeah, yeah. let me put your link here. Okay. Uh, for those who do not know, Liz is also a YouTuber. Uh, she has a very good channel talking about experience in America transitioning. She came here, uh, she has been here for like two years now? Yeah. Yes. So Liz has been here for two years. And that is her link below. You can be able to check her link and you can be able to subscribe and learn a lot of things from her. Uh, and especially like people who come with you with children. It is better to know what are the ways you can go to uh, transition in life while you have a child here? So that will be a good way to go about it. Okay, so as I was saying, let me show you on this link, uh, this book. So before I, I post the, the link of the book, I want you to uh, to know, like I would say, like half of this book is specific. Uh, so for instance, uh, you can see here, I say fully funded programs, PhD, in uh, music. So if you go on this particular page about music, uh, all these, so all the universities about music, you want a PhD in music, they're here. Then you want a PhD in anthropology is here. PhD in uh, political science is here. PhD in international relations is here. PhD in microbiology is here. PhD in management is here. PhD in physics is here. PhD in uh, psychology, anything you need is here. So the rest of the book is giving you particular university, all universities with programs you are looking for. So if you're looking for masters and these are 
PhD links for PhD links, but you can go to the same link and look, do they have master's scholarships? In the US, we call assistantship in, in most cases. You can be able to get it. So this particular book is going to talk about, uh, is going to give you uh, details, also how to apply, apply for master's. I know already someone is asking, what about master's and uh, what is there any master's or bachelor's uh, books like that? So the book is written uh, PhD, but the procedure to apply master's and the PhD in America are the same. So I have two other books, but they are almost the same. So just let just hear me out, first of all. Uh, do screen recorder, you're asking about master's. So applying for master's because PhD in the United States, you do PhD through what we call coursework and dissertation, just like how you do master's. So in order to apply for master's or PhD, you have to take the English proficiency test. You have to take the GRI or GMAT exam. If you are doing the management program, you do the GMAT, which is graduate management admission test. If you are doing the uh, non-management program, you're going to do GMAT and GRIE, which is graduate record examination. After that, after doing that, then you are starting applying to the universities. You apply universities, which they say, if you get admission, you are given automatic scholarship. Don't apply for university, which doesn't say anything. Let me give example. Uh, in order to make it easier for you, let me give just one example. Uh, so, uh, so most of these ones, they, they tell you uh, for sure that once you apply for this program, you are guaranteed to be given fully funded program on this particular program, uh, in this particular school you are applying. So those are the things. Uh, for instance, they say, for instance, Harvard, I'm giving an example. They say, uh, this is the uh, Harvard, uh, Cambridge, uh, in the city of Cambridge, the financial aid for the PhD in anthropology features guaranteed funding for the first five years to all PhD students and a variety of funding options and the fellowships to other students. So if you apply for bachelor, I mean, for PhD in, for instance, in anthropology at, some, I mean, at Harvard, you are guaranteed, if they admit you, they give you full funded five years program that way. Our aim is to attract the most qualified candidates and make Harvard financially accessible to all. Our financial aid program features guaranteed funding for the first five years to all PhD students and a variety of funding options uh, and fellowships to other students. So that is what, for, what I mean. So you have to apply to the school, which they say they guarantee you 100% financial support. So then, for instance, the, you can go to the same book and look at the, even if they say anthropology, they give funding. So just go to the same link. What about the funding for master's degree in the same uni, university? Most of these big universities they have don't apply to a university which hasn't clearly said that uh, they are providing uh, scholarships or the financial aid uh, to everyone who is looking for these particular opportunities. So that is what I want to make on that one. Okay, let's go to another part of the scholarships or studying in America. We are talking about studying in the United States for the fully funded programs. So there is bachelor degree, there is master's degree, there is PhD, and also postdoctoral, you know. But let's talk about bachelor, master's, and PhD in America. Overall, if you want to study in America, you have to know what types of resources do you need to have to prepare yourself for the admission. What type of resources do you need to have? Because if you compare with Europe, the procedures to apply in America are different. And they might require you to have extra income or extra resources. Number one, if you are applying for the bachelor degree, you have to take the English proficiency test as an international student. And also, you have to take what is called the SAT exam or ACT exam, one of those exams. So you have to take those exams. 
And each university you are applying for the bachelor, you have to pay for application fee as an international student. But again, in America, it's very difficult, if I've been saying over and over, to get scholarships for bachelor's degree. I've talked over and over. There are other reasons why in America, oh, most of the time around the world, it's very difficult to get a bachelor's degree. But in a very high level, let me break down to you. Bachelor degree in America is four years. Master's is two years or one year. So if the purpose is to help Africa, purpose to help Asia, or some countries in South America, why should I pay for one student to come in America and spend four years while I can have opportunity to finance two people in four years for master's? So in the end, you are going to sponsor more people for master's than bachelor degree. And if you want to sponsor for PhD, for PhD, it comes to be three to five years. Better to sponsor someone for PhD or master's because they are going to help with what we call assistantship to assist teaching, to assist uh, teaching, to assist any academic work, research with the university. And that can be able to help so many other people. And even someone with a master's and PhD, when he's going back to their countries, will be have a bigger contribution than someone with a bachelor degree. So the priority usually is on the master's. For the, uh, for the bachelor's degree, uh, I've already said about the uh, scholarship is called uh, at the Berea College. Uh, Berea College here in America is the only prog university uh, or college with the uh, with the what we call uh, what what we call uh, what we call the full funded program for international students. So if you go to Berea College or Berea dot edu, it, 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 uh, but or if you go to my YouTube, I have uh, a video which is talking about Berea College. So that will be something for you to consider. Go to my YouTube channel and you'll find the video about Berea College. I explained about how you can get a 100% full funded program at Berea College. Myself, I know Berea College is the only college in America with a guarantee of all admitted students for as international students to be given tuition and fees and the living expenses by the college as international students for bachelor's degree or undergraduate studies. So go and check that one. Apart from Berea, it is difficult to get a bachelor's degree. So let's go to talk about, overall, let's talk about master's and PhD. As I'm talking about resources, yes, you have to take the English proficiency test is a 12 test of English as a foreign language, which is American version of English proficiency, or you have to check the British version of this exam, which is uh, International English Language Testing System, IELTS. It costs about 350 US dollar. You have to do that in British Council in your country, or you have to do TOEFL, which is about 220 US dollar, whatever country you are doing that exam. You have to take that exam. Then in addition to that exam, if you want to come to America in specific, you have to take the GRI or GMAT. It's another exam. Matriculation exam. Even Americans themselves, they have to take that exam. I know there are some people who are using the opportunity, or many universities, during the time of this pandemic, they give exemption. They give the waiver. But if you have the chance, don't wait for the waiver because while you are waiting for the waiver, there is someone who did this GRI exam maybe the year before pandemic. The exam is going to expire after five years. That person will be considered more than you. So if you have the chance, take the exams. Don't wait for the sympathy. Don't wait for the waiver. Don't wait for the excuses. Prepare yourself as a competitive person. So you see... In normal exam, you take one exam of the English, which can be applicable in Europe. In the US, you take the English exam and you take the matriculation, which is admission test, GRI or GMAT, MCAT or LSAT, depending on the program you are going to pursue. Apart from that, 
you are going to do something else. You, are, you have to pay application fee for any university you're going to apply. Uh, uh, can it be $50, $60, $90, depending on the university. And again, so you see the cost, and you have to apply 15, 10, 15, 20 universities. So that is how the cost is going up. In Europe, there is no application fee. But here, the cost is going up. So you have to consider all those kind of costs. And then, in America, when you apply to a university, the university doesn't accept the tough results from you or the GRI results from you. They have to be sent by the owners of the test, which is Education Testing Service, ETS. And the ETS, in order to send the TOEFL exam for one university, one copy, they have you have to pay them extra $17. For the GRI or GMAT is $27. So apart from taking the exam, you will take the proficiency, uh, the, the results for the uh, $37 just to send one copy for the English, $27, the copy for the GRE, application fee for the $50. So it goes up to 100 just for one university. That's why I usually tell people, unless otherwise you have a special intention that my dream is really America, I have to put all the resources. But if you don't have enough money, it's better to take the English exam and to focus applying more in Europe. Once you go in Europe, you get good money for uh, your scholarship and studying uh, and working. Then you can apply for further studies or another master's or for PhD to come to America. So uh, I'm going to post the link of the free book. So this is the link for the free book where the book I'm talking about. So go to a uh, free book. Full, free, uh, this is a free scholarship book. You need to make sure that you download this one. It's free of charge. So I don't want you to have any excuse why you are not, uh, you don't have the uh, to apply. So also for the free book, you can also go to the uh, go to this uh, to this website, uh, which is EBM scholarships. If you go, you want scholarships, and you go to this particular EBM scholarships, it is my website which I post a lot of information about scholarships. Uh, ebmscholarships.com, you can be able to get all these opportunities for you. Uh, and even that book is posted there too. www.ebmscholarships.com There are so many information there. Uh, how to apply, resume, all these. So there are written documentation, there are audio documentation, and there are also some of these kind of uh, video also on that particular uh, channel, I mean, on that particular uh, uh, website. And I opened that one as a blog back in 2007 while I was a second year student at the University of Dar es Salaam in Tanzania. That's why I encourage people, you need to have work experience. I, while I was a second year student, I mean, I was in university, bachelor degree, I was teaching some of the schools just on like on my spare time. I said in my blog, Scratch blog, you have to do something to any work experience, whether it's paid, whether it's unpaid. All those kind of things, they play part. Because of that base of my blog, the blog is what made me to create a YouTube video channel. The blog is also the basis of how I came to write 11 books, but these are the three books. The scholarship books, uh, this is a Swahili version with Aminu Gaibun, for those who speak Swahili. Uh, this is uh, two memos of the scholarship guy, is my personal journey as a scholarship guy. And this is the scholarships uh, in America for people who are looking at uh, PhD, but also can use the same one for master's degree uh, process. So those are some of the tools I want you to share so that I don't want you to have any excuse why I don't have scholarships. Why did I get this one? Don't have an excuse. So make sure that you apply. You have to, when you are going to apply, now, you know for sure these are the resources I need. You must have some people who can recommend you. You must have some, you must have a very way good way of writing your statement of purpose and make sure that you use like a grammar.com website to check your grammar or ask someone to look about your grammar and even the logic of your essays. Make sure that you, you know how to write a proper resume. Make sure that you know how to 
have a good writing sample. How to upload the documents in a proper way. How to write a cover letter to be appropriate. So all those kind of things are very important. But overall, you have to apply so many opportunities. You have to apply, I usually tell people, apply at least minimum 15 programs. That means you'll be having opportunity. If you, we, if you get a scholarship, two scholarships, you can make a decision. But don't make a decision that I want to go to Stanford even you, you haven't applied any other backup plan. Apply many programs, get them, then you compare. This university is in Hawaii. This one is in Florida. This one is in Georgia. Where should I go? Which one give, gives me good money? Which one gives me uh, a good program? Which one uh, can have opportunity to continue maybe after that? Which one maybe gives me the opportunity, for instance, to work more? Which one gives me, uh, let's say, a good weather? You can look all those kind of situations. For instance, for me, while I was in West Virginia, when I got to California and Vermont and, uh, and Europe, first of all, I took out Europe. I don't want to go to Europe. I was already in America. So for that particular case, I had it to look, okay. Vermont is extremely cold, smaller states. California, who, who can deny to go to California? Best weather. They gave me good money. Apart from tuition and fees full paid, they were giving me 2,000 US dollars per month. Obviously, I have to go to California and do my master's. And to, master's was the same. One was conflict resolution, another was the PC studies in conflict resolution. So obviously I had to go to California. So I made a decision after having something tangible. Decision is what you make when you have something on hand and compare in terms of cost-benefit analysis of things you have on your hand. Out of that, that is not a decision. So you have to apply many programs, get them, and make a decision. That's what I will, I will try to, 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 uh, to help you or to let you understand. So, if you want to have scholarships, you have to have the mindset. You must know what time should I apply. The applications, most of them are from, October, from, from August to December. Most of the application in America. If you want to apply for the Berea College bachelor's degree, scholarship application is starting from the summer or around July, June, July of this year until November 30th each year for bachelor's degree in Berea at Berea College. So you have to know the application time. So you apply for instance this year, 2021, to go to study in August 2022. So if you apply to universities and you don't get admitted, that means you will not go to 2022 in August. So you have to apply 2022 to go in the year 2023 in August. So you'll be wasting almost two years of your life. So don't take a chance of applying fewer universities because you'll be wasting two years of your life. That's how you do. That's why you need to apply so many opportunities because you have no time to lose. You have no time to play around. Okay. Let's go to find uh, some few questions for people who have questions. Okay. Uh, let me go to go to a few questions. Okay. Uh, Okay. Uh, Mola Min Kise, uh, great. Will scheduled F1 visa appointment be processed? I'm from Gambia. Yes, they are going to process. Uh, usually the non-immigrant visa, F1 is the non-immigrant visa. F1 is international student visa. Non-immigrant visas are not a priority at the moment. On special cases, yes. And the student is a special case. And don't just say, I'm going to apply for the visa. You have to get admission, number one. You have to have uh, like everything ready to go when school is starting. So it'll be given like this is a priority because the school is starting at this particular time to go and get there. So don't assume, oh, I'm just going to... Uh, I'm going to apply for the visa as a student. No, you have to get admission. You have to prove if you are going to pay for yourself, you have to prove your financial status. If you got a scholarship, the admission letter will have the scholarship amount letter and that letter, that amount will be reflected into what we call immigration form number 20, I-20. So you don't need to have a bank statement. So for me, I have never used a bank statement to go to the U.S. Embassy because on my I-20, it was written, I have a $40,000 scholarship 
for my master's when I was going for Fulbright. It was a progr program of the U.S. Embassy by himself. So still after that time, there are, everything was documented. Uh, I didn't have to have any other type of documentation. Stephen Sons to say this is a great. How to get opportunity, I've explained on that one. But also, uh, I've created this book. Go and download the book. Uh, it's a free book, uh, which you can be able to get that one. Uh, I see uh, Akpel Ovie with the Nigerian flag. I believe you are in Nigeria. Thank you so much. Which part of Nigeria are you? Mohammed uh, Ahmed from Nairobi, Kenya. Yeah, so thank you so much, each and everyone. Uh, every day we'll be talking here. Uh, Akpeku, you are saying Canada seems to be cheaper. No, it's the same, almost the same. Uh, when it comes to uh, applying, if you want to pay for your own, US, Canada is more or less the same. Because the school fees will be similar will be 15,000, just like in many colleges in the U.S., what will be able to change is the cost of living of city you are going to study. Even in the U.S., if you are studying in California or in New York or in Virginia or in Maryland or, or D.C., the cost of living is higher than the cost of living if you live in Missouri, Kansas, Ohio, Wyoming, South Dakota, North Dakota, Nebraska, Texas, uh, South Carolina and whatever those other southern states, Mississippi, all those states will be cheaper. But if you want to pay for your own, that's why usually people, why do you need to study in America to pay school fees 15,000 and the cost of living 10,000, for instance, 25,000 per year, go to Norway, go to Finland, where it is free. There is no school fees. Then you are going to pay for cost of living. They need to have at least 15, 12, 15,000 US dollar to put in the bank, and when you arrive there, they'll pay back your money, and you'll be able to work. Why do you need to start paying extra? The education in America and education in Finland or Norway is, they're all educated, I mean, they're all developed first world countries. So if you want to pay for yourself, don't go to Canada. You still, Canada will pay school fees. The difference in application between Canada and the US, Canada doesn't have GRIE and GMAT in many universities. But you have to pay the, you have to take the English proficiency test and you have to pay application fee. And most of the application fee for Canada, the cheapest one is $85, majority $100. But still, all other procedures are the same. So for me, the cheaper is to go to Europe and especially go to Scandinavian countries if you want to pay for your own education. Because in Finland, Norway, most of the Scandinavian countries, they don't have school fees. They don't have tuition fees. That means you will be in a position to be able to pay just cost of living, living expenses, and you'll be able to work up to 20 hours per week, just like here in America. But in America or Canada, you will pay school fees. Or if you go to England, for instance, you will pay tuition fees and you'll pay the living expenses, apartment, food, books, transportation, You'll be able to incur all this type of cost. So, choice is yours. If you have the money and you have the requirements, better to use uh, 2,000, invest 2,000 into taking the exams and apply as many scholarships as possible, 20, 25, 30, so that you can be in a position to get at least one. Then paying 25,000 for one school academic year then another school academic year, the same amount of money, I don't give that is a good advice. So, yes, I know some people, they like Canada because we hear a lot of stories which are not true about Canada. People are saying, you know, Canada, if you go there, the jobs are everywhere. Who said jobs are everywhere? Yes, jobs are there. Do you have a work permit? That's number one. As a student, you're not going to work as a full-time. Just like in the US, just like in any European country, you don't go there and work full time, you work as 20, 20 hours per week. That's the requirement. Minimum job per hour, Canada, US, Europe is almost the same. 
living expenses, current use is almost the same, depending on which city you are. But we usually tell, oh, Canada, there are few people, the country is big. Yes, the country is big, but there are certain places, there are certain areas, there are no, anybody, anybody lives there. Just like in the U.S., you can go miles and miles, miles and miles. There is empty, nothing. It's still big. You can even buy even, uh, you can buy even 20 acres for 1,000 U.S. dollars because there are certain places there just like a desert. Nothing's there. You can buy the land. For what purpose? To have the land? So those are the things you need to understand. The Canada part I can agree on aspect that it is easier if you study in Canada to transition to be given permanent residence of Canada. But it, not just, oh, it is cheaper to get, or oh, it's easier, it's cheaper to go to become a student in Canada. No. The process for applying, the process, or if you are paying for your school fees, the cost of school, the cost of living, will be all more or less the same like in the U.S. The only difference is in the U.S., once you graduate, yes, you are given one year what you call OPT, optional practical training, to practice, but you don't necessarily to be given permanent residence. But in Canada, it is easier to apply for permanent residence of Canada if you have studied there. Because first of all, if any of you haven't studied in Canada, they have merit-based immigration. If you have bachelor degree, master's degree, PhD, you are getting certain type of points. Your age gives you is going to give you some points. And then if you have lived in a first world country, gives you extra point. If you have work exp experience in a first world country, like in Canada itself, you have extra point. So for that case, if you have studied and worked in Canada, it is easier after graduating to get a job, I mean, to get a permanent residence of Canada than if you graduate in the U.S. to get permanent residence of the United States of America. That is what I can tell you is the big major difference between these two. But Canada is not cheaper, as you can think, is the same, just like in the U.S. Thank you, everyone. Why did American uh, America make schooling so expensive? And fortunately, that's capitalism. That's how it is. Uh, there are so many things uh, because it's very expensive. Not just even if you go to England, all first world countries, apart from those Scandinavian, like all their school fees is expensive. America for international students it looks more expensive than uh, so in America. For instance, I live in Missouri. If myself, I study any university in Missouri, I can say my school fees will be 8000 per year. If I go to study in Alabama, because I'm not a resident of Alabama, even if I'm a U.S. citizen, I pay what is called out-of-state fee. So they times two. So instead of paying 8000 I pay sixteen or 18000 International student in many programs you pay is out of school, out of state. Some the school they give they have in state, out of state, and international fee or tuition fees. But majority they just have in state and out of state fees. So even if you are international, you are considered you are not a resident. So it doesn't matter. So if I am a resident of California, I go to study in Las Vegas to pay on my own. I will pay twice than the someone of the resident of that particular state. So the aim each state wants their own citizens or their own uh, residents to have the priority to study in their own state. That's how it is. Thank you for the important information watching from Jordan. I've already explained about how to get these opportunities. Thank you, uh, Ovi. Thank you, uh, Elizabeth Juso. This is great. I want uh, free scholarship and free living. Go and download that book. That's what I explain in the book. Myself, I didn't pay anything. Yeah, I got all the scholarships full funded. Uh, even the ticket was paid for, visa paid for. The first time, this is a full budget scholarship. You can see I'm with the uh, ambassador. The ambassador is called Bucky Green. Is U.S. ambassador in Tanzania back in the time. So that is where I was. I received the scholarship, full budget scholarship. Uh, and then, 
Yeah, so those are the few things uh, on the book uh, which are very, very important for you to understand. Okay, uh, so... Yeah, so... A high EBM, I really want a free scholarship. In America, yes, you get a scholarship, but after taking the examinations, after applying, and is, you have to pay to take the exams, you have to pay for the application. So free scholarship that don't that, oh, because I'm African, or because I'm from this smaller country, you have to compete. It's a competitive way. Download the book. It has explained how you go about it. Thank you, everyone. Uh, hi, EBM. Uh, any undergraduate scholarship in America? I'm with science uh, inclined. Uh, I've already mentioned about Berea College. Go to my YouTube channel and say, you will see Berea. I explained and showed each part of the application. Is there any age limit? Do they prefer younger students, especially for masters and PhD? That is from Haula Kayiga. Very few scholarships, they have age limit. The one you apply directly from the university, they don't care even if you are 100 years old. There are certain programs, yes, they can say few here. You don't in America, they don't care much about your age. What they need is uh what you need to prove is what are you going to do? I mean, what are your qualifications? What are you going to, uh, to contribute to that university? What are you going to do after that? All those kind of things. Grace Kirway, I'm a nurse assistant by profession. Help me free scholarship. Go and download the book and read the book. The book will help you to know, to explain to you what are the steps, what are the exams you need to take, why one person gets a scholarship, another person doesn't get a scholarship. So those are the few things. I have like four or five minutes to end this one. Download the book and know how to apply the procedures. Please, uh, could you share some the specific scholarship uh, Opportunities that are fully funded, Asante Sana. Uh, number one, almost every university, more, almost every university have a scholarship. If you want to apply in America, take the English proficiency test, number one. Number two, go and take the GRI or GMAT. Then from there, start applying. But you don't go to apply without those exams. So if you want, let's say, uh, let's say, if you want, let's say, uh, master's in conflict resolution, just type on the Google, uh, universities with the assistantship uh, for peace and justice studies, University of San Diego, University of Notre Dame, it will come down to University of uh, George Mason. So all the universities will be there. <coughs> uh if you say you, you are master's or PhD in political science with a full assistantship, the list will be there. But you cannot apply without taking the exam. So the first thing should not be, let me take, let me apply. The first thing, should I take this exam? Because without exams, you are not going to apply. You are not going to get them. Grace uh, uh, Kiriway, uh, you are saying, Nico Mwanza, you are in Mwanza. Thank you so much. If you're in Mwanza, you, that means you're in Tanzania, uh, i like for you to do one favor for me. Go on the YouTube, on the Swahili videos, subscribe to EBM Swahili. Type or go and search EBM Swahili or type uh, www.ebm Swahili. You will be able to get that particular uh, link and you can be able to download, I mean, to watch the videos in Swahili. They are there. Those are very, very important. Uh, I can also put in the comment some of these links so that you can be able to understand how uh, important they are. Uh, so if you want to go for the EBM Swahili, you're going to be able to do that. Uh, so let me go ahead and put uh, on the comment uh, and post there. If you go in the comment, uh, the EBM Swahili, that is the channel, youtube.com slash EBM Swahili. You can be able to find it there. Uh, 
for those who want to get me on uh, on social media, uh, for the Instagram, you can see my Instagram on the, uh, the I have two Instagram accounts. One is the EBM Scholars, uh, this one. In the another one is that is uh so not that is, I mean that is not even so EBM signature sorry, uh let me put uh Instagram uh is at EBM signature and the at EBM scholars those are the uh those are the Instagram channel. EBM Signature and EBM Scholars. You can be able to get those over there. Uh, and the obvious, on Twitter, you can go and check with the, the what we call the uh, underscore, LDS underscore Makurilo. Or you go to my channel on, at the end, on the uh, at the top bar, at the top bar here, you'll be able to see the, uh, what we call the, uh, just uh, Instagram, Facebook, Inst whatever, everything can be able to find me there. So that is my Twitter account. Is uh, you can follow me there. Uh, what is the name of the book? Uh, the name of the book: uh, uh, PhD scholarships for Africans in the United States. So you can even you can if you go to the Google search and write uh, EBM. Uh, EBM Scholars uh, free PhD book you can be able to find it there yeah so is uh, PhD uh, scholarships Africans in the United States by Ernest Makurilo go to the Google situation to be able to find that one uh, DK, I have 10 years gap. I'm a, uh, I'm a graduate. Can you apply you a student visa? You don't apply a student visa. You apply to school first. You get a scholarship. Then you apply for the visa. You don't just go to the embassy. I want to get the visa. Because visa to go and do what? You want to go to school? Show us admission. Show us how are you going to pay for the school fees. So apply for the school. They don't care what is the gap. The point, what are you doing those 10 years? Are you sitting every single day laying down or you have 10 years of work experience after graduating? Where to download the book? The book, I put the link here over and over everyone. The book is there. Or go to, go to this, uh, uh, go to this, what we call, uh, Go to the uh, ebmscholarships.com. If you go to the ebmscholarships.com, you can be able to get the uh, website which has the link, uh, and it's the first one over on the on the website. Uh, if you go there, you'll be able to see it. Uh, for those, uh, let me show you. This is the, when you open on the phone, this is the book. You see, it will be their free book. The first one. Free PDF book to download. So you click here. It will open. It will tell you about the book. And it comes down to download the link. Boom. It comes on this link. PDF download. The book is going to download there. You can use your phone, you can use your computer, you can be able to get it. And it's free of charge, that is the book. I don't know if you can be able to see properly. Yeah, let me find a way. I, I see there is too much light. Okay. Can you be able to see? I don't know. Yes, you, let's hear a little bit, can you be able to see? So that is the book. Okay, just wait. So you cannot be able to see properly because there is too much light on my bright light. But that is the book itself. You can be able to 
to get it. So you can get the full book, 455 pages free. Uh, Earth Tech HD, school can give admission no matter the age, but most times embassy won't grant you the visa. No. They don't care. If you are 30 years old, 40 years old, what, what, what age are you? Because for me, I studied and have people scholarship with people with, with 45 years old. Someone was 62 years old. I studied with the people. The point is, why are you going to study? Like, okay, I have this job. I want to go to study this one. I'm going to do this one. The point is not about age. Embassy does, doesn't care about age. First of all, someone with a lot of age is easier to be trusted than the person who doesn't have enough age. Let's say you are 45 years old. They know for sure you'll come back because you might have a house, you might have things which are attached than if you're just a graduate with 22, 25 years old. Even if you have a scholarship, they know this guy might not come back. But if you are 50, you already have an established life. So it is easier for the embassy to trust you more than just a kid just graduating from college. 33 years old, that is a small amount of age. That is not a lot of age. I mean, people are coming here, they are 50, they are 60. Uh, what about community college? Any link? I'm high school graduate watching from Kenya. Remember, community colleges don't have scholarships for international students. You have to know that. You have to pay for yourself. Community colleges, just type community colleges in, then name the state. Because there are very few. In each state, there are very few. So if you say community college in Missouri, community college in Texas, the list will be there. And all are government, public, basically. Or they're owned by the state. So just let community college. Community college is still have to pay. It will be cheaper than if you go direct to the four-year college. Community college will be school fees, tuition fees will be around, let's say, uh, 80,000 instead of 20,000 maybe. So those are the few things. Uh, which state is US is the cheapest fee for undergraduate studies? School for school under the course itself. Most of the schools, the cheapest one will be uh, as a university, like not about community college, as a university will be like 15,000. That will be the school fees only. Then where, how do you live? Add at least 10,000 on that. And I need to go to the uh, engineer school, a special community college. If you're looking for the community college, most of the community college will be about 8,000, whatever the set you go. Most of them, they'll be around the same 8,000 per year. Then the living expenses depends now on the city, state, wherever it is. <coughs> So now I've been here an hour and 80 minutes, so I have to end this one. Please, if you haven't uh, subscribed, please do so. Listen, uh, this book, the first, if the first, uh, almost the first pages, 25% of this page, they explain about how to apply masters and PhD in America. So I don't need to create a, a special book for how to apply masters in America for Africans. It's the same book you can use. Even if I said, the only difference here is the rest of the pages, they have specific names of the programs for PhD. That's the only difference. So the same book you can use to use the same procedures to apply for masters are the same procedures to apply for PhD. Yeah, so I have to end now. Uh, yeah, so please uh, remember to subscribe. For those who speak Swahili, there is a Swahili YouTube channel. Uh, subscribe to that particular channel. But apart from that, if you haven't subscribed to this one, to this YouTube channel, which is uh, EBM... Uh, EBM Scholars YouTube channel, please do so as we have been working so hard to make sure that we are reaching 100,000 subscribers. Thank you, thank you, thank you each and everyone for your continued support. Remember to subscribe and remember to like the video. Remember to share with others who can also be benefiting these kind of updates. 
May God bless you and have the rest of the weekend to you and to your family.